What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, April 30th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the future class of video games. Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Slow news day, huh? Slow news day. Blessing, There's nothing not happening. Today. Nothing happening today. Very quiet day in the world of video game news and uh, us and our lives and everything yeah. else like that. Yeah, not much. What are you going to talk about? I don't know. What's going on with you? What's happened with you? I mean, not much, man. You know, woke up this morning, played some more Returnal, hung sure. out a little bit, looked on Twitter. Not much happening there either. No, no, nothing yeah. happening. On Twitter. Real quick before we get into that other stuff, Returnal, uh, you beaten it? Are you gonna platinum it? Are you? Is there something and uh, that keeps you coming back right now, or is it just yeah, like like oh. the 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 game does a good job of just being fun regardless? Like my goal before beating it was getting to the end and beating the final boss and doing all sure. that stuff. But even now that I'm past the final boss. There's still stuff that I, I want to do post game. Like I, I do want to platinum it, which is rare for me in a game. But I've, ha- yeah. I've been having so much fun with this one. And despite it being super difficult, I still want to go back. You can ba- basically 100% through areas by finding logs and finding collectibles and all that stuff. Sure. And so now that's my goal. And then for the platinum, it seems like pretty much that's all you have to do. Like there's like there's things here and there of like get your weapon proficiency all the way up, like a random stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, like all I have left to do now is to complete each area. And once I do that, I'm pretty much there. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw, you know, our friend Brian, PS4 trophies, aka PS5 trophies. He's been tweeting about it during the, you know, preview period and now the review period about how much he likes it and the trophies. And yeah, he was like, it's a pretty straightforward list, but it's also don't think that's going to be easy. And I yeah. saw him today, uh, I think t- saying, not or maybe not today, maybe it was yesterday, but basically being like critiquing exactly what you're talking about, like the, the collectibles kind of suck in, because of the way it, it randomizes and how you're going to get your stuff. So it's like exactly. to collect all of that's going to be a, a, a chore. But if you are enjoying playing through, obviously, it still works. Exactly. How far, have, you, have you played any more since our review? No, because I switched over to the other thing we're reviewing. So now mm-hmm. I'm on Redacted and I need okay. to go all steam ahead on that. I'll tell you what, it, it tested me last night. Play, working on this review, doing my job, and then I saw on Twitter, what does it say? Hey, guess what? Uh, Retromania Wrestling, available right now. And I was like, is it uh, out? It's out. It's really Re- out? Retromania oh. Wrestling is finally out. And I was like, oh, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't go get it. I gotta, I gotta wait, I gotta wait. So I waited, awesome, like a good little boy. Uh, but enough about that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking Today, of little boys. <laughs> where, where are you taking that? Where are you taking that one? I was gonna you wait till housekeeping. A little boy. <laughs> I was gonna wait till housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen. If you have, if you're one of the many, 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 many thousands, of, maybe hundreds, yeah, hundreds of thousands of people who listen to podcasts and don't watch videos and maybe aren't on the internet all day long. Uh, today, Jen and I did announce that we are expecting our first child in October, oh thus making God. me for sure. <laughs> The king of Halloween. Ooh, All right, I don't know right that's now. how that works. That's how <laughs> yeah, much I love is. Halloween is that I timed out my first baby to come in October. All right? That's what I'm talking about, Bless. That's what I'm saying right here. It's the a prince move. of Halloween. It's a move, for sure. I don't know if it is a the king of Halloween. Well, but it's you know, a move I think for sure. I think it does right there. I think I admit, I think it does. You know what I mean? That's how it's going to be. So you got to sit, 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 sit there and take it. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, the journey that Jen and I have been on, of course, uh, you have, you tune in for a very special kind of funny podcast this afternoon on patreoncom slash funny. Jen is joining us to talk about uh, the entire uh, build up to this moment of being able to announce it to you. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff to talk about. We have uh, a video we shot back in March when. I surprised all of kind of funny by telling them uh, we were having a baby. And then there's a, a guest at the very, very end of the show to, to get some surprises and reactions from. But uh, yes, uh, uh, what about an hour ago now, we announced on Twitter and Instagram that we are in fact uh, pregnant. And I can't thank you all enough for your support. Obviously, uh, too many tweets to keep up with, too many uh, Instagram comments to go favorite. And then even obviously today, right now, as we uh, as soon as we went live here in terms of standby, uh, the chat on Twitch has been going crazy. And I I love you guys awesome. so much. I love you all so were you, much. So. Were you nervous at all, like putting out the tweet? Because I know you probably you, you've had the news for a while. Like I'm sure it's been building up over this time. It's yeah. I mean, it's you know, it, it's something I want to talk about on the show today, right? Of, of the kind of funny podcast. We'll get to video yeah. game news here eventually. <laughs> you know what I mean? In terms of like, you know, it is this thing that you know sharing makes it real. And so then you know, I don't you know, I, as somebody who uh, first off didn't want kids for the longest time, which I know we'll talk about today. But then even now, once we've started this ride of it and learning about pregnancy, and then also you know having conversations with so many of our friends, like you know, nothing is uh, uh, guaranteed. 
And so there is that thing of like how scary it is overall. And I, and I don't mean scary of like, oh man, I'm having a kid. But like scary and like anything could happen. And like having, being in this constant, like that was the entire first trimester for us of like being in the mindset of like, this is so cool. Don't get your hopes up. At any point, this could go wrong. There are so many miscarriages. It's completely natural and completely normal. And if that happens, like, you know, life goes on and yada, yada, yada. So like even getting here now, I think after the first three months of like, don't tell anybody and don't do anything and yada, 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 right? To be here on the other side of it now, week 17, it's still in, in my mind of that, but it's like not nervous. Of course, I, it's a relief. Today is a relief mm-hmm. for me and a relief for Jen because I hate, you know, not being a hundred percent honest in my life, and that means obviously on the shows and with all my friends and you know I've told my family obviously, but like I consider you know the kind of funny audience and community you know best friends, and I don't bullshit about that. And so like it is that thing of like having to check myself on shows where I'm telling a story and like what we were doing is like oh wait hold on don't you know let's generalize this let's move that. Like there's a whole bunch of little things like that that I'm happy I don't have to do anymore. And also I'm happy that, you know, like if Jen needs me at any moment, I can go now (laughs) before there were times where I'm like, oh, you know, I got to, you know, go by. And I don't mean like for an emergency. I just mean like I can't lift this. Can you help me? There's a package like this kind of thing, like stuff like that. So it's a big relief today and I'm excited to celebrate with everybody. But first. We have to lay to we have to lay to rest Crash Bandicoot because he's dead. Oh, Fall no. Guys is delayed, and Among Us is coming to PlayStation. Let's talk about all this and more because this is kind of funny games daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can write in with your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the daily video game sun. And of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you could get a whole bunch of exclusive shows. You could get exclusive access. You could get this very show ad free and with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can watch live for free as we record it on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, just like Fender B, um, kind of Steven, it's still going so crazy, Maxter666R, thank you for your support. Thank you for your congratulations. Thank you for uh, loving us and being excited for our announcement. But of course, please keep us honest. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday housekeeping for you like i said i'm gonna be a dad <laughs> jen's coming on the kind of funny podcast you can write in right now on patreon.com slash kind of funny for any questions you might have for us about becoming parents any advice you have i'd love to hear it too and of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny you can watch us record the show live this afternoon at 3 15 and if we don't have to edit anything crazy out of it watch it on the archive all weekend long and if not it'll be live uh, for free of course youtube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe next week on monday uh right now speaking of next week uh the next two Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We are partnering with Razer to show off the RTX 30 series powered blade laptops with Andy and the boys playing some Warzone. In case you missed it, uh, Apex Legends Legacy First Impressions are up with Blessing and Andy. They're live right now. It's a new mode. It's a new season. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Are you impressed with it? Very impressed with it. Go check out the first impressions. We talked about it for about uh, 26 minutes. Me and Andy and Andy was able to show off his gameplay uh and so if you're curious on how the game plays if you're curious to check out some of andy's gameplay in arenas definitely check it out we talked we talked about the new mode we talked about valkyrie we talked about the new season in general because there's also changes to the olympus map uh which they hyped up a lot and so definitely go check that out excellent uh thank you to our patreon producers mick aka at the nanobiologist tom bach trent barry and blackjack today we're brought to you by dr squatch final fantasy 7 interred caviar and channel fireball but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the rope report time for some news a baker's dozen god damn it you know i mentioned the final fantasy ad here in the chat kino the mystic saying wu-tang i didn't say wu-tang blessing i didn't say listen you said wu-tang i did not say wu-tang uh number one on the rope report 
Rest in peace, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, it looks like Toys for Bob, the developers of the Crash Bandicoots you've been playing recently, are no longer the Toys for Bob you once knew. We go to their Twitter where they tweeted, Toys for Bob is proud to support development for season three of Call of Duty Warzone and look forward to more to come. Hashtag let's go dev squads. Hashtag Verdansk 84. This tweet went up and everybody went, oh, what the fuck? Really? Another Activision studio is just getting roped into doing all this Call of Duty stuff. That sucks. Blah blah. And the best was blessing. On, I I clicked on the tweet today to put it in, and there was like the first post was from some I think random person who was just like, a lot of people are reading into this. People are allowed to go do this. I'm sure they're still working. And then he followed. I this is so rare on the internet. Followed up hours later with the screen cap from the Reddit about layoffs. He's like, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Wow. This sucks. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. I appreciate you being in front of that. Uh, for the full story, we go to Eurogamer, where Wesley Yinpool has this report. Well, actually, he did the tweet uh, stuff I just talked about, and then he has the follow-up report here. However, California-based Toys for Bob appears to have suffered staff exits as part of the shift. Character designer and illustrator Nicholas Cole, who worked at Toys for Bob up to January on Crash Bandicoot 4, and before that, the Spyro reimagined or reignited trilogy tweeted, quote, it's the end of an era, but I wish my former coworkers uh, still with Toys for Bob all the best with what's ahead. Then, everyone I interfaced with or worked along worked along the way was let go. I'm very glad it's not a total it's not a totally shuddering. This is how it's spelled in the article. Game designer uh, Blake Malouf is another former Toys for Bob developer who tweeted to say that he had left the studio. "Quote: I left on my own terms. I had been needing a change. I had been needing a change anyways. So this just pushed my decision." Activision declined to comment when ca- when contacted by Eurogamer this morning. The news comes hot on the heels of Activision's announcement that Warzone has sold over one or has over 100 million players, and the Call of Duty series has sold over 400 million copies. Clearly, Activision is doubling down on Call of Duty at the expense of some of its other franchises. The news also follows confirmation that Vicarious Visions, the studio behind the superb Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy, and most recently the well-received Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, was merged into Blizzard after collaborating together for some time. Vicarious Visions is now working on the Diablo 2 remake at Blizzard. It seems the majority of Activision Studios are now working on Call of Duty. Infinity Ward, Treyarch, Sledgehammer, Raven, Beanox, High Moon, and now Toys for Bob all contribute to the mega franchise. It's unclear what the future holds for Toys for Bob and Crash Bandicoot. Reporter Liam Robertson uh, took to Twitter to say a Crash Bandicoot PvP multiplayer game was in the works. When the PC version of Crash Bandicoot 4 launched exclusively on Battle.net in March, players weren't exactly thrilled to discover it's an always online game. I imagine, at Toys for Bob, uh, they weren't thrilled either. Mm. Blessing. I did I did the, you know, rest in peace, Crash Bandicoot, question mark, exclamation. What do you think is going to happen here? I mean, it sounds like, at the very least, we're not going to see much new from Crash Bandicoot and the other Activision franchises that we really like for a while. Yeah. It's very, it very much seems like they are all focused on Call of Duty in a way that feels somewhat uninspired and somewhat of a bummer granted from a pure business sense i guess it makes sense because call of duty is such a money maker especially when you factor in how successful warzone has been over the past year for them like warzone kind of took call of duty to another level which is crazy to think about because call of duty was already the most popular shooter on the market right and so for them to to be in that cycle of having yearly call of duty releases uh, across three three main developers, and then having Warzone on top of that, and having Warzone be such a success for them, uh, I guess this was probably one of those things that was inevitable, but we didn't really want to believe it would go this way. Um, but it did, which makes me wonder, like, what what does happen to Crash Bandicoot in these other franchises? Because I Crash Bandicoot Four got really good reviews, really yeah. good reception. The yeah. last few Crash Bandicoot games that have released between uh, the Insane Trilogy and Crash Four seem to have sold very well. I remember the sales for Crash Bandicoot Insane, Insane Trilogy, Trilogy being out of this world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember listening to KFGD and you guys reporting on it, and, and it being a very impressive thing, especially in the UK and other countries. People people support and love Crash Bandicoot. I'll say the same for Tony Hawk and the other franchises. But I guess that doesn't move the the needle enough when you factor in Warzone and you factor in Call of Duty and how big of a juggernaut that is. You know, when you compare that to Crash Bandicoot for Activision, they of probably course. look at that and they're like, yeah, no, Crash Bandicoot is, it sells and it's doing well and it's successful. But what if we just shifted all of this into Call of Duty and made made even more money, which is where this comes down? 
Yeah, and that's the thing about it where it's I don't think anybody was ready to look at uh, Activision Blizzard, right, and be like, "Oh man, they've really uh, turned over a new leaf." They're not all about. They're not about making money, right? I mean, last, yesterday we talked about you know Bobby Kotick making uh, definitively less money than he was before, but still making an obscene amount of money, right? And so it is a company that is driven by shareholders and business and the business of games. We always talk about that, right? And I think for as many times as we want to sit around and you and me in particular have a conversation like, oh, does PlayStation play it too safe with their first parties and yada, yada, yada. You're still seeing from somebody like PlayStation, somebody like Xbox, such creative liberties given to developers to go out and do things that aren't just another Uncharted, aren't just another Last of Us. Like, and I granted, I know there's sequels to those, but you understand what I mean in terms of like, we're committed to a franchise. And like, I think that's what's interesting about, you know, Call of Duty, right? And where you talk about what Activision is. I think, and I know this sounds, it doesn't sound ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to me because I just realized how old I am. But you have to understand that in my lifetime of being a consumer of video games, I've lived Call of Duty take over the world, right? To jump back to yesterday's reporting uh, on Bobby Kodak's uh, thing, right? This was from uh, Danielle Partis at GamesIndustry.biz, right? Uh, they're talking about how, you know, all this, uh, the, you know, his, he still, he, they cut his salary, right? He's still eligible to earn up to 200 things. So I joined for this paragraph. The amendment note that under Codex leadership, Activision Blizzard's market, market capitalization has increased from less than $10 million to over $70 billion with an 8,000 100% increase in shareholder return between 2000 and 2020. Now, again, that's 20 years, but that's 20 years that is dominated by Call of Duty being the juice that makes this whole, whole makes the river flow over here, right? That, that's what's the spigot of money. That's what the water is that's coming out of it. And so, in a way, I was more surprised to see Activision go, you know what, we are going to do the Insane Trilogy. And I remember when that came out being like, well, there you go, Tim, that's all you're going to get. Or do you think they might do another one? And he's like, oh, man, I don't know. And he was hopeful. And then when the sales came, we were like, holy shit, they're going to do a fourth one. And then they did the fourth one. Yeah. And the fourth one, I feel like, even though it's been out, what right, but they just did the PS5 versions and all that jazz for it. I feel like it's out, and now it's like, cool, bam, we're done. That was what you got. You wanted a Tony Hawk that didn't suck like the one we did before. Bam, here's Tony Hawk 1 and 2 remastered. Awesome, great. That's done. Back to work. We're, like, we've given you that little bit of fan service, and now everybody back in line, we're, we're going back to make Call of Duty. It's crazy, too, because you also got Crash Team Racing. Like They were, they were making moves that were surprisingly uh, unique and creative and felt like they were at, trying to add more to that, uh, I guess, first-party studio catalog of Activision. And I guess it is worth worth pointing out that Activision, you kind of you kind of touch on this. Activision has never not been this company, yeah. right? They've always been the company that is like, yo, what is the money making move? Yep. How do we capitalize on this as much as possible? Tony Hawk used to be annualized, you know, for the longest time, and then once that stopped making, uh, once they stopped seeing the the return, the return on it, yeah. they're like, cool, let's slow this down. Oh wait, Guitar Hero is killing it. Cool, let's annualize this. All right, we're stop seeing we're stop seeing the return. Cool, let's slow down. Call of Duty. Let's annualize this. And Call of Duty still continues to dominate, which is why which is why they're still continuing to focus on it. And again, like this kind of feeds into that thing of, all right, sweet. Y'all just put out Crash Bandicoot. You guys over here, you just put out um, uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Cool. Good job. But now we need you to actually get back into and, and make yeah. us Let's the make maximized some amount money. of money. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I we this kind of does, this is in a weird way comp comparable to the Sony conversations that we've been having, even though I think on the Sony first party PlayStation Studio side, it does feel more a, a little bit more inspired because you are seeing the San Diego studio and stuff work on, uh, I guess, Last of Us remake. And you are seeing uh, Ben Studio, even though they were brought in to work on, reportedly brought in to work on Last of Us multiplayer and a new Uncharted. It seems like when they were unhappy with that, Sony let them go back and they're now doing something new. Yeah. Um, but with that, you know, we also have the conversation of Sony bringing in, uh, uh, partnerships uh, with developers to help bring in new games i wouldn't be surprised if activision had uh reached out and partnered with maybe some double a or upcoming triple a developers to work on crash bandicoot still or work on tony hawk pro skaters still i think that is best case scenario but at the same time is also like not a given you know i totally. wouldn't be surprised if they didn't do that also and that's the thing where i think that's the future of it where i think that right now 
they've done it. They've gotten the, they've squeezed the juice from those apples, right? And I don't know why I'm so, I'm, I, keep, I keep using like juice metaphor. So, uh, but like now, yeah, they're not going to worry about it. And when slash if demand is there for more crashes in more, uh, uh, I guess, storied Activision, like Spyros and whatnot uh, uh, franchises they have, that's when, yeah, maybe that is the way they do it, where they do reach out to a different developer and have them go do it. But you, I think, really nail something interesting that I've always thought of it, but we don't talk about it often is the fact that this is Activision. This is what Activision does and unapologetically. Like that is their business model and what they do. And I've always found it so interesting when you look at all the shit EA gets for being, oh, they're money hungry and they're money grubby and yada, yada, yada. And this isn't me trying to defend EA at all. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the, because uh, of, of course I'm aware I hosted the EA play. So you can take anything I'm saying with a grain of salt. But I mean, as an industry commentator, right? The fact that EA is EA and everybody hates them for it. And Activision actually everybody's like, all right, you suck, but I'll still play Call of Duty. Like, it's like that thing where it's like they, there were expectations for EA not to be like that because at one point EA wasn't like that. And then they had this dark period of really seeming like they're chasing your dollars and your microtransactions and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's always been interesting to me that Activision escapes that eye of Sauron in the conversation because, of course, like, they, this is who they are. Like it's like the scorpion frog, right? Like it's of course yeah, yeah. I, it's in my nature. This is what I do. What's a scorpion, <laughs> Greg? <laughs> What's God, a scorpion yeah. look like? It looks like a slug. It looks like a slug. Look, it's like a slug with legs. Um, but no, I, I mean, I think you're spot on. Like when we were talking about the way in which both these com companies operate, Activision and EA are very much in the same camp. And I yeah. think, uh, and it's actually fascinating because EA. I would say it's a, it's a tough comparison to make because Activision also has Blizzard and people love Blizzard also, especially Overwatch and Diablo and, and their bigger franchises. But EA has things like EA Originals. They just published It yeah. Takes Two, which is a thing that you wouldn't necessarily see from Activision. Granted, Activision published uh, Sekiro. And so like apples and oranges to some extent. But I think part, I think part of where that conversation, at least for the audience side, maybe gets uh, a little bit, I mixed up maybe is is the fact that you associate Activision with Call of Duty, which I think we see and we're like, that's a game, that's a gamer ass game, right? That's like a that's pro hardcore gamer game. thing. That's, that's a pro Mountain game. Do and that's you know? Doritos, yeah, yeah. Whereas EA, you associate with sports, and I think maybe maybe that's where that uh um that that mix up happens, where people well, look at that and they're like, that's less of a like sports is sports. I don't consider that like hardcore gaming in the way that Call of Duty sure. on the Activision side is. Yeah, I think there's that, and I think it's, you know, obviously the missteps EA has made in the past in messaging and everything else where you do that, and sure. I think are like, hey, we we have Maxis, and we have SimCity, great, SimCity's always online, and it's going to be a complete cluster, ah, oh, fuck it, you know what I mean, and like, there are so many different stories like and that. You, and you, you look, look at, at them as, like, the, stu the publisher that fucked up Star Wars, you exactly. know, like, they had Star Wars deal for the longest yeah, yeah. time, and you've seen them trip over that time and time yeah. again, and so I think that has, that, that's brought out, like, a lot of hatred <laughs> out of gamers. Yeah. It's just, I, I've always found it interesting that, yeah, you know, Activision is just, they are who they thought they were. Danny sure. Green. Andy gets that reference. Don't worry about it. Uh, number two on the Roper Report. Fall Guys, Xbox, and Switch has been delayed, but crossplay has been promised. Uh, we are over on the old Mediatonic uh, blog, uh, Fall Guys blog, where they write, with so many new opportunities now in our hands, we've realized that our previously announced summer 2021 Switch and Xbox release schedule is unfortunately just too soon for us to include all of our tasty new features we're working on. While we want to launch on these platforms as quickly as possible, we believe the Switch and Xbox releases are go really going to be worth waiting for, and we're super grateful for your patience. This delay gives our team some time uh, to add new features like crossplay. So when we add new platforms, players will be able to stumble into in harmony with their pals regardless of their platform of choice. What's next for Fall Guys? We're continuing to grow the team uh, to best meet community expectations and deliver top-notch future content. We, oh, I'm sorry, the heart of the team remains the same as ever. Fall Guys will keep rolling out new seasonal content releases, fresh shows, costumes, rounds, and all the other delicious things you know and love. The rapidly approaching season 4.5 update is no exception, with two fiendish new rounds heading your way, plus delicious fall fashion for your season 4 wardrobe. We don't have a new date to share right now, but we're here and we'll be communicating any updates as soon as we can. So plus good news, bad news there. Yeah. And like uh, 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 this is, I think, another W for Epic. You know, I think the crossplay thing specifically is something that happens because they were brought in uh, to Epic Games, and so shout out to that. But of course, like take your time when it comes to yeah. uh, developing games. You know, like it's a bummer too because it's a bummer because Fall Guys on Switch. 
I think would just would be such a win. That'd be such a, a dope way oh. to play that game. But of course, it's one it of those where to put out games. Totally, I agree with you. But like both of these will be wins whenever they come. Oh, and it is sure. that like that's gonna you I, if you thought Fall Guys is cool, just wait until it's out because this is correct me if I'm wrong too. Fall Guys is Game Pass, or am I making that up? I do not I, remember. I can't. I might be it. making that up. Yeah, give me a check on that. Or kind of funny.com slash wrong. Everybody can check me. We're, I'm looking at the chat too. I thought I remember that, but I might be uh, conflating it with something else at this point. But regardless, when that thing drops and is everywhere, it's gonna be all it's gonna be nuts. Like it's gonna be all over the mm-hmm. place. Yeah, like you're gonna be seeing Fall Guys in a brand new two new brand new places. You can play it with everybody. I think not only is it going to invigorate two new audiences and sell a bunch of copies it's also going to reinvigorate people to come back to their playstations to play it with their friends there their pcs to play with their friends there buy new content buy new stuff you'll be all set yeah oh here what i'm seeing like fall guys is game pass what i'm seeing in chat from ol uh, omglx it was leaked and then retracted and somebody else yeah omglx is similar to what happened with uh control Control. when that happened yeah yeah, exactly so remains to be seen if it will or not and again even if it doesn't don't worry about it yeah Yeah. (laughs) cast pool it was announced by the game pass twitter and then retracted by the company so not probably a launch but we'll wait and see how that goes but yeah again i'm with you take all the time you need fall guys and like as i you know the my reading started with so many new opportunities there was stuff before that where they were talking about you know being acquired by epic has opened up all these new doors and all these different things so take your time use the right skills and get in there uh worth pointing out while we're here though uh next week on thursday may 6th uh kind of funny is sending a team over to ign ign is doing a charity stream for stop asian hate uh we are going to go over there we're going to play i believe it's what it's me it's nick it's mike and you or is it andy andy, andy. andy. You're, you're too good for it huh yeah well they said fall guys and i was like i don't want to dominate the whole, the whole game <laughs> i understand i appreciate that i appreciate that so mark your calendars everybody that's going to be uh i think seven o'clock pacific time uh we'll be streaming our view of it but you can go to ign.com and watch the entire thing there uh, number three, this is from uh, the PlayStation State of Play yesterday. Among Us is coming to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. I'm going to read a quick blurb from the PlayStation blog. Our social deception game Among Us is coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 later this year. Hop aboard a spaceship with four to ten players via online play and get to work. Just don't forget that there may be one or more imposters on board ready to sabotage your work and take a deadly swipe at you. Uh, like this says, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 this year. The one thing it doesn't say uh, is that there's a ratchet and clank cost them a pack for it too as well so you can dress your characters up like that it's how they revealed it yesterday in the little stream hell yeah this is cool it's funny too because they they announced this i was like oh let's go that's awesome and then later in the day i was playing apex with yusef yeah. and I was, we were talking about it because we well me and uh yusef used to play apex or not apex we used to play among, among us. us well both but like we used to play <laughs> among us all the time and talking about it bringing it up i was like yeah, they announced it for PlayStation. I don't think I'm ever going to play Among Us on PlayStation. Like, why would I play Among Us on PlayStation when I can just play it on my PC? Trophies, bro. Trophies, bro. Uh, I guess there are trophies, but that still seems like such a weird way to play Among Us, especially when you have so many options on PC with uh, proximity chat and, and mods and Discord alone. You know, being able to totally. mute yourself and deafen yourself and all that stuff is kind of part of the experience. And you can still play in PlayStation parties and have it be a uh, a good game. Like, I think it is a valid way to play, but definitely not the best way to play. But yeah. the Ration Clank costume is really cool. Yeah, we'll see what happens. For me, it's like, I, I, you know, I've struggled with this and I don't talk about it often, but I will right here in a safe spot. You know, I've admitted I'm a dad today. I'm vulnerable. Uh, I just don't like Among Us. Like, I get it. I just get it, but I've done, man. I've done got, so many it, streams with it. And I'm just like, I just don't like it. And I think part of it is that I came in so late. So it's like, I can't lie because I don't know the games and I don't like being mm. having the shit kicked out of me all the time. So I don't want to just keep playing to find out like how, what the games are. So people are like, where were you on the, wh- what room were you in? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Southeast. I was down there. Like, what did you see? I'm like, I don't know. A box. It's about big brain plays. Like Among Us to me, I I, I like being crewmate more than I like being imposter because sure. I also don't enjoy the, the lying aspect. You know, I there'll be some lying. days, there'll be some days where I'm on and then some days when I'm off and when I'm on, I can I can I can lie like crazy in Among Us, but when I'm sure. off, that it, it just sucks. But either way, when I'm crewmate, the thing that's really fun for me is trying to figure out like the the actual act of solving. Like, okay, where where was everybody? Like, you know, people will be like, no, we can't vote people out early, and I'm like, fuck that, man. Like yeah, yeah, intuition, yeah. we can figure this out early. I lo- I love that process in Among Us. It's also why why I like got super into Clue <laughs> a few months ago because <laughs> Clue is literally just that. And so like that that was scratching that it, that itch super hard, but yeah man among us is it's that thing where to be clear like great game 
I love that people love it. Uh, it. It reminds me so much of that Jackbox game. I like that we played all the time back in the day on party mode. Yeah. But it's just like I missed the train, and by the time I got on, I was just like, all right, this is it's out of the station, and I'm not, mm. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. But go be you, you know. What if it has a, if it has an easy trophy list? Can we get you back into Among Us? Can I mean, we how easy? Get into it? Like, what, what, I mean, you can't do that much in Among Us. I know, but I mean, so it's gonna be like play fifty games, play hundred yeah. games. Like, no, no, fuck that. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, I, but I, you'll I, be I things. I, if it's good, it'll be things like play five times on each map play with these settings you don't think it'll be like win as imposter kill people in this oh yeah that's a really good one yeah kill like some can add a five bunch. times yeah. yeah shit should i play should i play on playstation there if you I go see my, my, uh, here we go here's the thing if you get in there and you say greg miller this trophy list is dope and i'm gonna platinum it i'll platinum with you we can go we can go through and i'll play a bunch of among us we can it's become tempting. among us all stars you know what i mean it's really tempting. But you and I also say all sorts of stuff like let's 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 get really into Fallout seventy six. Then we played it for one Saturday together. We're like, all right, this is cool, but I'm not coming. That's back. Fa- that's Fallout seventy six's fault though. You know, like when I got into Fallout seventy six and I realized that it doesn't share your objectives. That was that was the that was the thing. I was Very like, confusing. no, I'm not doing this. Uh, number four on the Roper Report. Let's talk about IO Interactive working on a Dragon game for Xbox. This is Jez Corden at Windows Central. Recently, IO Interactive of Hitman fame spoke to GamesIndustry.biz about spinning up a third team to support a new IP that was something different for the studio. And we may know a bit more about what it is. A few months ago, I received information that Microsoft and IO Interactive were in talks for a new fantasy RPG dubbed Project Dragon. While it's too early to share any sort of gameplay details, the final product may look wildly different than the initial pitch, what's on paper thus far sounds incredibly ambitious and represents a completely new direction for I.O. On I.O. Interactive's website, various job listings are live for multiplayer positions in I.O.'s Swedish studio. And indeed, we've heard that this Dragon Project is a connected world RPG set in an entirely new universe. One of the job listing PDFs on IO's website specifically refers to the team being Dragon, adding credence to the information we've received. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr., mm-hmm. a huge Hitman fan. Yes. You, of course, made Hitman contracts for IO Interactive's Hitman 3. Yes. What do you feel about them working on a Dragon RPG? RPG right. featuring in, dragons. In 2016, I bought an Xbox One from uh target oh, remember this. because of a price error and i got it how much you get it for? I was, uh probably like 100 bucks oh wow okay wow that's yeah cool. yeah i got like i got a, a real good day i thought they were gonna cancel it they didn't cancel it and so i got it shipped it was awesome um but i got it with uh the excitement to play two things one rare replay and i played the hell out of rare replay two there was this game that was announced at the time called scalebound uh, I remember that scalebound. I, I thought looked really cool and i love platinum and i like dragons and i was like yeah this looks really cool scalebound never came out but this new io interactive game has dragons it's an xbox exclusive and it might be the answer to my uh my, my scalebound woes and so that's really exciting but then also like uh just th- this game being a game from io interactive very fascinating because this is not a this is not their type of game that they're usually making <laughs> this isn't you know? james bond this isn't hitman <laughs> yeah <laughs> this exactly like, a dragon <laughs> rpg what <laughs> they're they, they when they announced that they're working on a james bond game you know it's like oh that makes sense that is a fit them announcing they're working on a fantasy RPG with dragons, them announcing they're working on what basically sounds like Skyrim, that sounds crazy, but also I'm into it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this pans out because I think they, they're really good at making games. I yeah. really like developers trying something that is new for them, fresh for them, because I think that, that's how you get things like uh, Insomniac working on Ration and Clank, but then also working on Spider-Man. You know, like both of those things, granted, make a little bit more sense because when you look at the movement and like the gadget set and all that stuff, it's like, cool, Insomniac made both of those games. But if IO Interactive can be that studio that's known for, hey, we're dope with Hitman. Hey, we're about to make a dope-ass James Bond game. And hey, we can make a Dragon RPG <laughs> for that's an ex- Xbox ex- exclusive. I think that'll take them to another level. And so this sounds exciting to me. I'm always excited to see people stretch their wings, uh, you know what I mean, and stretch their legs and get out there and do something different. And I do think that IO has come off of such a high with the Hitman series, right? It's such an awesome story for them, right, of being with Square, Square letting them go, and then Square also being like, take Hitman. Like, 
Hitman wouldn't be Hitman without you. So you guys go with it. And then the success of Hitman 3. And then, yeah, these different projects they're working on. And now the James Bond license. Like, I'm excited to see what they have up their sleeve and what they like to do. Because, you know, it does on some level, a new fantasy RPG sound as crazy as when, like, Gorilla, the Killzone guys, were making an open world RPG. And you're like, what? An open world exclusive RPG set in this weird robot dinosaur world. Uh, I have a question here from Druvenator. Mm-hmm. Druvenator writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says Druvenator. Yeah. I see I always call them D D-H Druvenator. That makes yeah. sense. Druvenator. Yeah, it's one of those over the years Druvenator's written in at least once or twice to be like, it's actually Drew Drew. And like sometimes we remember, sometimes we don't, but I remember two days in a row. Am I awesome? I'm pretty awesome. That's all. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh there are about eight RPGs in development at Xbox Studios. That's nuts. Two questions. Which one are you most excited for? And is that too much? Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, Fable, Avowed, In Exile Entertainment's AAA RPG, IO Interactive's AAA Project Dragon RPG, The Outer Worlds Team RPG Project, and then Josh Sawyer's Small RPG. Okay, I've not heard of Josh Sawyer's Small RPG, but out of these, the answer for me is Starfield. I think Starfield's going to be the... I mean, it's Bethesda Game Studios. It's them doing something uh, different, but seemingly on the scale still of a big Fallout game or a big Elder Scrolls game, and, and that really speaks to me. Um, and then, like, a lot of these other ones, like, I'm going to... Space space sounds... Uh, space is cooler to me than fantasy, which is why I have it over Elder Scrolls. Sure. Uh, Fable, I've just never been a Fable person, even though I'd be down to check this one out because it's being done by Playground, and Playground's excellent. Avowed doesn't really speak to me. We don't know anything about In Exile's big RPG. Um, I Interactive's AAA Project Dragon RPG. I'm looking forward to, but you know, again, we've not seen anything from it. And then uh, the Outer Worlds team RPG project. Again, we don't know much about it. And then yeah, Josh Sawyer's. We've not heard much about it. But uh, out of those, Starfield is just the one that strikes me as most exciting, and for we, know, me, we know at least a little bit about. For me personally, it's between Starfield and Fable, and. Fable being obviously uh, Fable is one of those franchises that attracted me to an Xbox and got me to play the Xbox for the first time, really, and go out of my way to play it in my uh, roommate Parker's room. Uh, and then on top of so uh, God only knows what this will be, but if it's reaching back and trying to be that, I could see myself really enjoying a you know brand new super HD funny whimsical fable i could be down for that and starfield of course like i do like bethesda games and i it, i'm interested to see what a brand new world from them a brand new kind of rpg would be from them yeah space and all that jazz and see what that's about uh but i think the downside of course there's downs cons for each of them where it's like cool bethesda games usually pretty buggy how how is it a, a brand new uh, open world rpg in space gonna work from them and then fable a thing of like cool playground doesn't usually do these kind of games and how do you live up to the not even the legacy of fable the nostalgia of fable you know what i mean i think that's Mm -hmm. gets to be so hard to overcome the dark horse for me would be uh the outer worlds teams rpg because i i didn't love outer worlds like i enjoyed it fine but i didn't think it was like revolutionary and i wonder what their next thing will be and i really hope they get the fallout license you know license that sounds wrong that sounds wrong you know what i mean i I I hope that now everybody now that everybody's xbox studios that like yeah here you go take a shot at that yeah and that's one that's probably gonna be really far away because they're also working on avowed and so that's probably a avowed is probably next for them and then whatever unless unless this is one of those we have two teams working concurrently situation which it very very well may be um i wouldn't expect to see that one anytime soon greg my question for you is is this too many western rpgs for xbox first party like do they need this many western rpgs i don't think it's too many western rpgs i don't think they're all hitting at the same time i think there's going to be these are spread out over multiple multiple years and so i think you find a new audience for each one of these in a lot of different ways where i think starfield is going to be different than elder scrolls is going to be different than fable is going to be different than, you know i mean you go down the list like that and i think you know, as I was glancing over here at the chat, right, there is a, a little boy here named Vicious Six Nine Six who says, you know, let's see what the new sci-fi world from Todd Howard looks like. Fable never truly grabbed me. And this is Paris Lily from the X Cast. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is, I think it's such a diverse thing of RPGs in general. I think there are ones that grab you and ones that don't. And I think for most people, and I I could be wrong in painting with too broad a brush, but I would think with most people, it's they don't. Like, there's ones that grab you, like, very specific ones, and then there's ones that just, you know, I'm not going to play that. I never would. And so I think if you're Xbox and you have all these, you want that to be that diverse thing, especially if what it would look like, you're trying to be the definitive place to play RPGs. Because then you do get the people who want to play everything, and guess what? You can get them all on Xbox, you can get them all on Game Pass, you can have a great time. Yeah. 
I agree. Ooh, 1042. How many? Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. Well, we got oh, God, a lot no. of show left. Oh, God, there's a lot of show left. I'll do ads here. And then Benjamin Barry, I think your question got saved for the post show yesterday. It's getting saved for the post show again today. Uh, right now, though, let me tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where, of course, you can go to hear Benjamin Barry's question as the post show. Uh, you could also go there to get the show ad free. But guess what, Jack? You didn't go to patreon.com slash kind of funny game. So let me tell you about our sponsors. First up, it's Dr. Squatch. Okay, real talk here. That soap or body wash you're using, it's shit. It's packed with harsh chemicals, synthetic detergents, and it's brutal on your skin. If you're ready to step up your game to soap that's natural, great for your skin, and doesn't smell like a middle school locker room, Dr. Squatch is where it's at. Dr. Squatch is changing the way men approach hygiene with their natural personal care products that make you feel like a man and smell like a champion. All of Dr. Squatch's soaps are made in the USA using the finest ingredients nature has to offer. This means that you get natural cleansers and nourishing ingredients that are actually great for your skin. Dr. Squatch's soap come in a huge range of natural manly scents that are going to transform your shower. Whether it's their best-selling pine tar or scents like bay rum and cedar citrus, you're never going to have a boring shower again. Right, Blessing? Right. I love Dr. Squatch. <laughs> Blessings using uh, what you said, the grapefruit IPA right here. And you described yeah, it as yeah. quote unquote heavenly. Oh, yeah. I love the grapefruit IPA. There's the one, Kevin, what was the one? The the goat something, but goat milk. Kevin's not yeah, here. that sounds right. There's another one that, there's another one that smells really nice. It, like you would read the title of it and go, no, huh, thank you. That seems like it's peculiar, but then you smell it and you're like, oh, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> If you really want to make it easy for yourself, you can also subscribe to Dr. Squash, just like the hundreds of thousands of other guys out there. Every month, fresh bars of Squash show up at your door. It's super easy. They've even got a full lineup of personal care goods like deodorant, hair care, and toothpaste. Right now, new customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more when they go to DrSquatch.com and use the code DSCKFGD. That's DrSquatch.com, code DSCKFGD. Uh, for 20 goat's milk. Deep sea goat's milk. Yeah, yeah, I would great. not think that smells good. Uh, yeah. For twenty percent off so on good. orders of twenty dollars or more. Up next, it's Final Fantasy VII Intergrade. Grab your weapons and join the resistance because Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade for PlayStation 5 is here June 10th. The shadowy Shinra Corporation is draining the planet's very life force, all for their own gain. The mercenary Cloud Strife teams with Tifa, Barrett, and Aerith to take Shinra down. Whether they succeed depends on you. We are so excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. It's the definitive version of the award-winning Included Kind of Funny's Game of the Year Final Fantasy VII Remake. Intergrade comes with so many expanded graphical gameplay and system mechanics. We're talking about improved lighting, crisper backgrounds, more realistic textures. Intergrade brings the game's visuals to a whole new level. Plus, you can switch between graphics mode and performance mode depending on whether you want 4K or super smooth action with 60 frames per second. Plus, yes, there's a plus. The game comes bundled with the episode intermission, a brand spanking new episode featuring Wu Tai, Wu Tai, the, the mess with. <laughs> God, I hate you, Ninja <laughs> Yuffie, as the main character, uh, where she'll conspire with Avalanche HQ to steal the ultimate materia from the Shinra Electric Power Company. Pre-order Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade today by going to sqex.link/remakekf. That's sqex.link. Sla backslash remake kf Greg, what's uh, next the name of the currency in final fantasy 7 remake do you remember materia no that's like the other thing that's like the upgrade stuff you mean the, like their money what are you trying to do yeah, you're like trying to money. set me up for something i want to get set up you're trying to set me up oh, he's, no, he's just, smiling <laughs> gil no, just, gil every saying oh, gil yeah, yeah yeah have you heard of the phrase Grim? no gil rules everything around me <laughs> Oh, I hate you. God, I hate you. Let's talk about caviar. Look, <laughs> loving good food doesn't necessarily mean you're able to cook well. If you want a great meal but need a little help, let the restaurant come to you. Caviar can help. Caviar is the food delivery app for people that are into good food. They bring the best local restaurants directly to your doorstep. Other apps may have national chains, but caviar keeps it local. Those hidden gems in your neighborhood, they're on caviar. Caviar curates local options for every taste, whether it's the perfect Reuben from the sandwich shop or the best Indian vegan curry. You always have options for whatever you want. 
Not sure what you want to eat? Let Caviar's staff picks recommend the best spots in your neighborhood to find your new favorite. And just for our listeners, Caviar is offering $10 off an order of $20 or more. All you have to do is put in the offer code KINDAFUNNY at checkout. Remember, that's $10 off a purchase of $20 or more with the offer code Kind of Funny. Download the Caviar app and use the offer code Kind of Funny. And finally, we're talking about Channel Fireball Box Breaks. Channel Fireball is a very big name in the collectible and trading cards industry. Our new initiative, CFB Box Breaks, involves live stream packs and box openings. Uh, people will purchase a group in a break. I'll use basketball as an example. Let's say y'all buy in. Tim gets all the Cavalier cards. Greg gets all the Miami Heat cards, etc. And the break happens live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, we stream breaks starting at 1 p.m. Tuesday and through Thursday, 3 p.m. Friday and Saturday. There are also personal breaks. Let's say Blessing buys an entire box of Pokemon cards and opens it live on stream before ship, or they open it live on stream before uh, shipping him the contents. Each stream also builds to a premium break. These are usually spicier and more expensive breaks with big hits in them. For example, this Saturday, we are breaking open a box of revised Magic The Gathering. Each booster pack is $500, and there are cards worth over $1,000 you can open in there. Box breaks are a fun way to get your hands on collectible cards, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Flesh and Blood, and sports cards and more. They're running an awesome deal on Battle Styles, the hottest new Pokemon set right now, and you can get a box cheaper with CFB Box Breaks than anywhere else. So head to CFBBoxBreaks.com and make sure you use the code KINDAFUNNY so they know we sent you and get 5% off your first break. Break, break. I knew you were setting stuff up. I saw you with the grin. I was like, ah, he's setting me up. I'm going to yeah, walk right into it. it. So much. Chat was chat. It's all, uh, also started a poll uh, asking if I should be banned for the bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it off. You should. You should. I like that. Uh, number five on the Roper Report. Cyberpunk did not do well in terms of critical success, but it did well with money, which means the bonuses are going to be booming. We go to Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg, who, of course, is coming in to co-host the show with me next Friday. Uh, we joined the story in progress. Cyberpunk 2077 was the video game industry's biggest flop of 2020 it's how avengers you, you, you dodged it avengers thank god for cyberpunk uh, it's myriad glitches fueled the internet's meme machine and sony corp still refuses to sell the game through its online store yet the executives who run the polish studio that made the game will nonetheless receive millions of dollars in bonuses this year millions of dollars in bonuses this year the rest of the staff will also get bonuses but some of them expected bigger ones and may have gotten more if the game's release had been delayed until it was ready as they'd asked if developers had time to work on the kinks and bugs then cd project sa would likely have sold more games leading to higher profit instead management pushed the game out anyway Yet Iwinski and co yet Iwinski. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I obviously edited this. They're talking about all the heads. Iwinski and co CEO Adam Kaczynski uh, are each slated to receive a bonus of uh, $6.3 million, according to the company's annual report. Adam Badowski, a board member and the director of Cyberpunk 2077, will take home $4.2 million. These bonuses, part of an annual profit sharing plan, are based on the company's 2020 net earnings, which jumped more than 500%. Let's break down the numbers. And again, Jason has this whole thing up. I've gone through and parsed information out. So he can get the complete report there. But I am reading a lot of it. So go support Jason. Uh, let's break down the numbers. Of CD Projekt's annual earnings, 20% is allocated to the profit sharing bonuses, with 10% going to employees and 10% going to the board, according to the company. Some employees told Bloomberg they would receive profit sharing bonuses of about $5,000 to $9,000, while some other senior employees said they will get closer to $15,000 or $20,000. Managers and direct directors will likely receive much higher bonuses. In a statement, a CD Projekt spokesperson said the company had allocated a total of $29.8 million to 865 employees for an average of about $34,000 each. Staff also received separate smaller performance bonuses earlier this year. In contrast, the... I'm sorry. In contrast, just five of CD Projekt's board members received bonuses totaling $28 million. CD Projekt executives did take a financial hit this year. Four board members down roughly four board members own roughly 33% of the company's stock, which plummeted 57% since Cyberpunk's launch. Punk's launch. Uh, but they'll also receive uh, more in a year bonuses than many workers were paid in the lifetime. 
When asked on an investor call last week whether it was, quote, appropriate for the board to take such hefty bonuses, Kaczynski said that their compensation had always been tied to the company's profits. We earn this money and the company earned this money. Of course, but more net profits, more but more net profits, more net profits, more bonuses. So, well, we have results, we get bonuses, and that's the contract we have. The good news is that CD Projekt appears to be re-examining its practices in an attempt to keep staff from departing, a concern that Kaczynski acknowledged on the call. One employee said that this year the company reevaluated salaries and increased wages for some of the lowest paid positions, such as testing, to align them with video game industry standards. Even so, the compensation chasm between the studio heads remains vast. Between them and the studio heads remains vast. Uh, one of the things I cut out for time, even though I know that was a long story, uh, was the fact Jason calls out of like, this isn't something exclusive to video games or CD Projekt Red. Like, corporations, there's always this giant gap between your board, or most, not always, but you know, both the times between your board and your CEOs and yada, 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 versus yeah. the people who are actually making the game. Still, but, an, ast still an asinine, like, amount of money to make. <laughs> still a bonus. ridiculous amount of money. Still yeah, ridiculous 100%. amount of money. And Jason also shouts out on, on Twitter that it's helpful, to, it's, a, it's helpful to remember that averages are misleading. CD Projekt Red staff, not counting the board, got an average bonus of 34k per person. But that doesn't mean most of them receive that. Hypothetically, if one person gets 100k and four other, others get $5,000, that's an average of 24k. And so like, I know people might look at those averages and be like, well, you know, the pe people are still getting paid. People up top might be getting paid way more. And it's guaranteed, actually. People on top are getting paid way more uh, than people who are making the, the lower end of that. Yeah. Um, and also, I want to add even more context. You know, like the, the uh, Bloomberg story starts off talking about Cyberpunk 2077 being the biggest flop, which kind of characterizes the story of like, why the fuck are these guys getting these bonuses? Which I stand by that. Why the fuck are these guys getting these bonuses? But it's also worth pointing out, too, that like Witcher 3 sold like crazy last year, too. And there are plenty of other things of course, going, going of on course. at CD Projekt that aren't uh, Cyberpunk 2077, which feed into these numbers. Even still, these bonuses are asinine. Yeah, it's there's a bunch of different pieces to it. I see people over talking about it. Remember, this is seven years of work and stuff. Like, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things happening here that are coming out to bonuses for the people who are the head of the company who are doing the things, yada yada. If this wouldn't even be a story, right? If it wasn't the fact that Cyberpunk was such a disaster. That's the that's the real heart of the matter here. As Jason points out, uh, you know, these things happen all the time in corporate business. And the reason it's interesting here is because, yeah, like it's the same reason everybody's like, Cyberpunk sold how many copies? Like, wait, what happened on this yeah. game that was just the biggest trash fire of returns and being pulled from the store and yada yada yada. Like it's it's a lot of shit here. And it's just the normal thing of like, God, <laughs> cyberpunk. Yeah. Who would have fucking thought? You know what I mean? Like, it would have been a wild prediction to be like, not only is it going to be poorly received, it, and again, like, uh, poorly received, we're throwing around loosely, but I mean, like, is it going to be a disaster on PlayStation 4? It's going to be pulled from the store. It's going to totally change overnight the perception of CD Projekt, right? This company mm -hmm. that, before cyberpunk, really could do no wrong. When they would transgress and stuff, it was very much like, oh, well, they're they're fine. They did great with Witcher, and they took care of everybody. And then we're here. It's like, jeez, man. Jeez. It's crazy too that like we're we're post uh, seeing be, seeing Bethesda Game Studios release Fall seventy six, mm -hmm. seeing Anthem. Bioware release both Andromeda, but then Anthem, and somehow it seems that CD Projekt Red has trumped both of those things. Like they have they they have been like I guess over the last five years, this has been the one that sticks out the most of anticipation. Uh, versus the actual release of the game just totally. not meeting up at all, which is crazy. And again, think about that too. Just like Cyberpunk 2077 was the video game industry's biggest flop of 2020. You, like live cut to Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics. We're like, Whoa. <laughs> God, we, buy, we got out We got out of the last I second. Mean, it's, <laughs> the, it's the exact equivalent, I think, of Bethesda releasing Fallout 76 and then a few months later, Anthem releasing, sure. and then everybody forgets about how bad 76 was and is like, yo, look at Anthem. <laughs> uh what do we got five minutes left i'm gonna i put these in here when i thought we not to pad but you know the, I, you know these are shorter stories than they need to be number six outriders has a patch out today but it doesn't fix the inventory white bug that everybody wanted instead i'm reading some paul tassi forbes stuff here generally speaking there should be a lot less crashes and less bugs related to multiplayer so hopefully stable sessions overall and they fix the internal signing glitch not sure uh if this is the extremely long long one 30 plus minutes or the normal length but still long one i've experienced on the console i'll have to go check if you don't follow paul Tassi over on Forbes and you like games as a service games even though they say this isn't one of them check it out more importantly I put this in here of like hey blessing remember Outriders dude 
right? Like I'm not. We were about playing that, that right? game, and we're like, this is it. junk food, and we're just enjoying it, and it'll be gone, and it was fucking gone. Yeah. I don't even see people talk about Outriders anymore. It's because they don't. We that all played was just it for like, like last week or like a week and a half ago that we were. Was, everybody that's was the crazy thing. It. When we were all when we were all obsessed with it, the conversation was, "Oh, we'll probably be obsessed with this for like two minutes." Or I'm sorry, yeah. two weeks, two weeks. And it turned out it was one week. And, yeah. I, and it's that thing of like I, you know, bailed and didn't play anything last week while I moved. So I was kind of like, "Oh, maybe it's still there." But I was like, "Oh no, I've been full on back this week, and I don't hear anybody talking about it." And granted, like that's how we work in waves and Returnal right now, and then getting ready for Resident Evil and yada yada yada. But even me of like, man, I want to platinum that game and I'm not, I've done in so much work of it already, but I'm like, is anybody going to play with me when I want to fall back to it and do it? Yeah. It might Maybe I can drag Snowbike Mike in for streams. That could be a way to do it. Anyways, here we go. Uh, number seven, uh, there were some Fortnite teases. Uh, again, I kind of hinted at this, and I'm reading from Mark Delaney at GameSpot, but I'm just going to super summarize. Uh, Kevin, if you want to click on them, feel free. If not, don't worry. There you go. Uh, so d- d- what is it here now? Uh, Data Miner's Springy Sway uh, found this. A new Star Wars character is set to debut on Star Wars Day, obviously May the 4th. Uh, the skin cannot be seen yet, but the game's files, uh, but there's references to it, including a silhouetted teaser image you see below. It somewhat re- resembles a stormtrooper of some kind, but it doesn't fit any known iteration of the armored villains to date the mystery around the character's identity has some fans speculating that it's related to the bad batch a new disney plus animated series that is scheduled to premiere later this year uh, the bad batch focus isn't it it's coming up super soon isn't it the bad, bad batch, batch? Fourth, yeah. fourth right yeah like next yeah so week. I, yeah so premiere later this year yeah it's next week i definitely think i don't know i know shit about it that's a, that's got to be a bad batch guy though right or oh 1000 yeah I mean, okay. he looks like uh, like I've, i don't know shit about bad batch but I, it the looks leader's like the bad bitch, right? Shit. That's what it is. Yeah, the bad the bitch. Bad that's batch, what they call. It. That's what they call them. Uh, but that looks like some bad batch type shit. Yeah. And, and then uh, uh, Kevin, if you want to throw up the next one, uh, we're just this is still uh, Gamespot's Mark Delaney. Uh, we're just one issue into the Batman Fortnite zero point six issue comic art, uh, but oh, some shit. of the new DC cosmetics are already appearing online. Obviously, if you buy the comic book that came out last week, you get access to the Rebirth Harley from a code inside the game, and now they have a Batman uh, zero skin that looks like it's set to drop soon uh this is from ali a uh, a youtuber who says that epic shared it with him to show off uh, epic previously announced that besides rebirth harley all items related to the batman slash fortnite zero point will arrive in the item shot di- shop day and date with their respective comic issues since the second issue will hit digital and physical comic shops on may 4th we can expect some sort of dc comic section in the shop that day though batman zero may still be for a later date and then the final one here is again uh, over on GameSpot, we'll, we'll call it a required reading. You can head over there where Eddie reported on the fact that I'll read you the intro. Before Bungie agreed to a landmark publishing deal with Activision for the Destiny franchise, the studio considered signing with Microsoft or Sony for the franchise. Speaking to Games Beat, former Bungie higher up Martin O'Donnell said Bungie rejected the partnership opportunities with Microsoft and Sony because those companies apparently wanted to own the IP, and that was a non-starter for Bungie. And there's a couple of little fun stuff in there. I guess. Uh, uh, Sean Layden, former PlayStation Worldwide Studios head, was on there and grinned a bunch when he started talking shit. <laughs> PlayStation wanted to own the IP. He was like, yeah, yeah, we did. I love post post PlayStation Sean Layden because he seems like he doesn't give a fuck anymore. Like he's responding to all the tweets. He's yeah. like being cheeky out there on Twitter. Like he doesn't give a fuck. And he's got a cool beard. Last I saw. Yeah. Blessing, I'm excited to see if Sean Layden has the beard forever, but that's so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops. Where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. yeah. Out today, Jet Cave Adventure on Xbox One and PC, Solar Blast on Switch, Rive on Switch, Curling on Switch, Gunslingers and Zombies on Switch. New dates. I didn't read ahead on this one. Siege Survival, Glory Evictus, Steam, Epic, and GOG on May 18th, uh, 2021. Operation Eagle DLC for Iron Harvest, May 27th. And then, I guess this is Blessing added, Greg's Baby in like five months. <laughs> yeah, you told me to help you out with the dock, and so I, I helped you You crushed out it. Thank you. That is exactly what I needed from you. I like that a lot. Uh, let's go. Okay. We asked people watching live on twitch.tv slash games to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong to tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames roosterteeth.com and podcast services around 
the globe each and every weekday. Uh, nanobiology says, Greg, uh, the Jackbox game you're thinking is... Uh, uh, it's man, not. I, that was a simple sentence, and I screwed it up. Greg, the Jackbox game you're thinking of is faking it. That it is, is definitely not. It is the Alien game, isn't it? No, well, that is one of them, but I'm thinking of fake it. Yeah, you are thinking of like faking it. The okay. hold you up your hands and you're trying to hide that uh, that thing. I like that one. Gotcha, a lot. gotcha. Push the button uh, is the other one. Is the alien one that I thought you were yeah, talking about? Yeah, that's then that is very much like it. You're right. Uh, Kebab says the official PlayStation magazine UK has been canceled. Uh, OPSM UK was the last officially licensed console magazine left in publication, ending a 32 year period that started with Nintendo no- Power Number One in 1989. We salute you. Goodbye. Uh, Psycho Retros 2 writes in and says, Retromania is out on PS4 today. We already covered that higher in the show. All right? I know you're saying, well, you just did out today. You didn't put it there. I've already covered that news. I don't repeat myself on this show ever. Ever. All right? You get the news hot and fresh once, and if you miss it, get out of here. I don't know if you Woot. listen to PS Love You. We repeat the news all the time. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. They need to watch everything. They need to do everything. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, that is your final show of Kind of Funny Games Daily for the week. Of course, there's a post show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames if you want to head over there, settle in, get ready for us to post that, but I understand if you got things to do, you can catch it later. That's where you get ad for yada, yada, yada. Let me run you through next week's hosts. Uh, Monday, it's going to be Blessing and Tim. Tuesday, it's going to be uh, me and Gary. Wednesday, mystery. Wednesday's a mystery right now, all right? It's all question marks there, but I have emails out to people about who, who's going to come in and do it. We don't know. Number six, that's Thursday. <laughs> I only had one cup of coffee, and it's been a big morning. All right, I'm sorry. Not everything's firing on the red cylinders right now. <laughs> That's not even the sixth day in the week. Wait, is it the sixth day in the week? No, it's Thursday not even the sixth day, day in the week. I'm looking at Google Calendar because I wasn't oh. sure if this had been updated. So I'm at Google I Calendar. I got to Thursday, but I didn't say <laughs> sir. Like, I said six from? <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, uh, it says Greg and Tim, but we had a, a company meeting like we do every uh, Friday to plan the next week of content. And one Joey Noel, as always, pointed out, Greg, you're on too many shows that day. So I doubt that I'm going to actually end up do, being on that com- games daily, but I'll let you know. Uh, and then Friday, like I said, it'll be me and Jason Schreier uh, before we go into the Subathon Marathon, which will be a giant uh, thing here on kind of funny ga- or kind of fun- twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And I'm not sure if we talked about it before. So if we had an act surprised when Stomach Mike tells you about it whenever he does that. Blessing. <laughs> Greg. Are you excited to do the post show with me? Very excited. Excellent. Uh, if you're watching live right now on twitch.tv slash kind of funny uh, games, you can stick around. Uh, Joey Noel is coming in to show you Pokemon Snap and have a, a round uh, robin. People just coming in and talking about games, having a good uh, good time. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you miss it and you're seeing this later, you can catch Joey's Pokemon stream as all our streams go up on our newest YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. You can go have some fun there. But for now, Plus, they now are running to patreon.com slash games where you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show ad-free. And, of course, you can catch the post show we're about to do. If you have no books, toss our way. YouTube.com slash games, Roosterteeth.com. Podcast services around the globe. No post show. Plenty of ads. But it's still a good product. I know. You know? You know. I know. You know. I know. Here, here, here's the other thing. I can finally talk about this, too, Blessing. Here's mm-hmm. the problem I have, right? Is that Jen, now that I can say she's pregnant, right, can only have one cup of coffee a day. And so, oh, is that part of the rules? Yeah, she got a whole oh, bunch of weird rules. Wild. Oh, that's wild, dude. She her rules suck. I've been having to overcook steak. It sucks. Uh, it's against everything in my body. Hers too, but like she's got a, another body in her body now. So it's what we yeah. Gotta do. Anyways, uh, so I can't. I I don't like. I nobody. I don't make a pot of coffee anymore. So then I, I by the time I'm f- I'm through with the first cup, I do. If we go on a walk and get a cup of coffee. Then it's like shit. I need more coffee, but I'm about to do the show. And so on. I think I might get a Keurig for the desk. Is what I'm saying. I might get a little one of those Ooh, little one cup cool. Keurigs right there. You know what I mean? I mean, new place, new you, man. You can establish new routines, it's establish true, true. new things yeah. you can do. Well, well, the best the part office. is when you really think about it, and this is how I understand it. And Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh-huh. In like five years. I'll basically be able to go, hey, kid. And the kid will just bring me the coffee. And then after noon, uh, I go, hey, hey kid. kid. The kid sure brings me a beer. Just crying. <laughs> <kid's gonna> rebel <laughs> <against you. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go do a post show on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Thank you all so much for your love and support today. Uh, you have overwhelmed me and Jen. And like I said, we're podcasting about all this later in the afternoon. Uh, catch it later. Yada, yada, yada. Basically, though, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>